Leaves are falling all around. It's time I was on my way. Thanks to you, I'm much obliged for such a pleasant stay. But now it's time for me to go. The autumn moon lights my way. For now I smell the rain, and with it pain, and it's headed my way. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley, in director from deep in the bowels of our underground lair. We're here. We rule the roost. <laughs> Maybe nowhere else. Definitely nowhere else. <laughs> but at least we got this. I tell you what. <laughs> all the way to your curb, Jay. We're in charge. All right. Just so well, minus knows. the ten feet setback. The, yeah, right? ten the, feet uh, right away. Yeah. <laughs> the I, ten I, feet that you pay taxes on, but technically don't own. Right. That used to do feet. that too. <laughs> <laughs> I used to pay that too. <laughs> Funny story about that, actually. I remember. Yeah. Um, I'll guess the song in a minute. I might know it. Ooh, I might. Okay. Um, one year I forgot to pay the property taxes, and I, right before my fishing trip, I left. I drove down to the Hennepin County office. Blah blah blah. They're like, oh, Mr. Richter. Technically, they're not late until the thirty first. Technically, and mm-hmm. I was like, ah, you a holes. I mean. I could have just mailed this in, and here I was I was panicking. It was past May 15th and all that. And I was so upset about it. You know, I don't write that many checks for, like, four digits, okay? This is back when I had a check mark. Yeah. Then I think I went out that night. I got so toasted. I was just walking upside down, and uh, it took me a while to get up and drive up north fishing the next day. <laughs> Totally irrelevant story. I just yeah. think of it every time I talk, think about property taxes. Ugh. Just think of the time of the year I forgot them. Um, I don't know that I know the song, but it's just that. Why am I thinking that I do? Well, you may. It is a popular song, after all. But there are thousands of popular songs. So, I'm not saying that to put pressure on you. I'm just saying it's possible. It's possible. You know it. You will when I say it. Of course I will. Yeah. It's like a Pink Floyd. You got the right era. So 70s rock? Yeah. Well, who was in 70s rock? Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, uh, Kiss, Land on the Right Track? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Kiss. I'll say Kiss. I don't know. No, it is Ramble On from Led Zeppelin. Oh, God. I did kind of guess it. Totally not knowing. Said them. <laughs> yeah, ramble on from Led Zeppelin because we're going to talk about some some people that have rambled on later on. Jimmy Page, Jimi Hendrix, the only guitarist better than me, by the way. Yeah, unless oh, that's Guitar Hero. Uh, uh, but no, I which I don't play well either. So. <laughs> uh, I got the chance to see Page Plant uh, at the Target. Uh, I almost said Target Field. Target Center in like huh. the late nineties. I saw Page Plant. I wish I would have gone to that show. I didn't. I didn't realize w- what I was seeing at the time. Yeah. You know, it's. I, I saw Garth Brooks right after that. It was. Oh, that. Ninety seven, ninety eight, somewhere around there. He's pretty much been booed off the country scene, hasn't he? You know. I don't know. Kind of unfairly, I think. Garth's a good guy. I don't. Really yeah. Him, but, and I don't. I don't think anybody who drinks a Bud Light has to. Take a position on something. No, it's just me. no. I'm just you know. That's he's got to know his audience a little better than that. He does. <laughs> if when you're in business, you yeah, you have to right. know your customer base. Your, your brand is yeah. your brand, so, right? Um, and then, but I didn't I didn't realize what I was watching. Yeah, you know. So and I don't go to many concerts. I haven't been to very many. I don't know why. Now they're so expensive to go to. I oh, I know. I mean. And the reason so for I, that I is... Could, I be, could go on a yeah. vacation at a cabin for a week right. when it costs to go to one concert. Well, and, you know, I, I didn't think about it a whole lot. I mean, I don't like it either. I would love to be the guy that, if I were ever in their shoes, that I go back to the $25 a ticket. But that's how artists make most of their money now. You know, they they don't make it off of record sales anymore, you know. They just if don't. They're not on tour. They're not. Everything's streaming, so they have to make money somewhere. So it goes to concerts, and unfortunately, if you're on a major label, they take part of that too. Oh, everybody takes a part. Your agent, your manager, your travel people, your yeah. bandmates, your 
sound it, some of those people are necessary obviously. right the the truckers that drive your set from place to place the roadies who set it up the everybody i mean all at that. a hotel everybody goes gets a per diem to go eat yeah i mean it's a lot of money to go on tour yeah absolutely <laughs> garth brooks used to rent buses yeah he used to talk about that i mean i had to go hire bus drivers and buy my own buses because yeah it's the only way i could haul everybody They'd go get the big old Prevost bus. And, and just think about it, too. Think about if you're not selling out. I mean, you got to sell out, too. Yeah. You know, that's the other part of it. I mean, selling out Target Field can't be easy. 40,000 seats there. Well, I think when you're Garth Brooks, it's okay, a lot easier. If you're on that level, maybe. But if you're the middle guy or the guy yeah. coming up. Or, you know, no, you're not doing venues like that. No, you're not. You're playing the state fairgrounds. That's what you're Right. Doing. I mean, that's exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I mean it is. It is a. It's weird how much that business. You know that business better than anybody. It's weird how much that business has changed, and uh, you just. Uh, I yearn for the days of the old garage bands. That's just me, but I mean. Yeah. I, I just think that's where the creativity comes from. I think as soon as you get a corporate label, and as soon as you come become a brand, that's a great way to take every bit of your creative edge away from you. I mean, yeah, I mean, who's sometimes. the guy? Who's the guy? Uh, the rapper. Uh, uh, Tucker Carlson interviewed him, and I can't think oh, of Oh, Ice Cube. No, not him. Oh. The other dude. I don't know. I don't know those guys. I don't either, but, but one of them, I saw that interview. That was pretty good. It was, but there was a guy before that, and uh, he talked about how he voted for Trump. Huh. And he liked a lot of things Trump was saying. Yeah. And all the people around him like, no, you publicly, you can't say that. You know, you can't. He goes, well, look, he has some things he says that I, I, I care about. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't, you can't, you're a black guy. You can't talk about those things <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, now you've become somebody who's lost. Yeah, and maybe it's still thing you got to know your audience, got to know when to be quiet. But I mean, I, it, it's sad that people can't avoid <laughs> politics no matter what you do. Right. I'm gonna have to look up who that guy was. That's why in some of my songs, I just take it head on and say forget about it and just say they're all terrible. But isn't that the beauty yeah. of music, though? Freedom of expression and that kind oh, of absolutely. stuff. Oh, I absolutely. Mean, Music used to never shy away from oh, absolutely from an issue, and even if I disagree with the issue, it's still great music. You think about the protest songs back in the '60s by like Bob Dylan and Joni Mitchell, and 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 folks like that, and then you had this whole hippie generation that was into that, and then they get older and they've become it. Sorry, Kanye West was. The oh, was okay, Kanye West. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, there was a time where people just weren't afraid of that. And don't trust the man stopped when you became the man. <laughs> and now you're like, trust the man. I ain't no senator's son. Yeah. <laughs> now they're senators. <laughs> Not that I have anything wrong with that, but when you... Yeah, you can't punish somebody for the family, but yeah. But when you become a senator and you start taken off the top you start doing things to benefit you you well, start doing things to hold on to control instead of doing what's best for people then here's the worst part the worst part yeah. is what they do after that yeah they'll become lobbyists they'll lend their name right to this or that that's almost worse i mean i'm sorry but look look what these baby boomers that the, the hippies look what the hippies have brought you climate change restrictions uh the covid restrictions uh destruction of our economy inflation education system education system in shambles you tell me one thing they've fixed well i don't think government's ever fixed a problem i think if you're looking well looking i'll to tell you thomas jefferson went overseas and and knocked some heads with <laughs> with some pirates over in libya and, that's right roar in tripoli yeah I, you know i i probably am being uh, facetious when i say that because um, I think, again, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I think there are people who really do want to solve problems, but they don't understand that the government, nine out of ten times, makes something worse, not right. better. And look, I don't trust. There's plenty of fat cats in the, in the quote-unquote marketplace, whatever we have as that anymore, that I don't trust either. Yeah. 
I mean, once you've attained a bunch of money, what do you have left? It's the pursuit of power. That's the only yeah. thing you have left to go get. If I'm Bill Gates. I can buy anything I want to. So what's my what's my ultimate goal now? It's to attain power. Mm -hmm. It's to use my wealth, J.P. Morgan style, to attain power. So yeah, I mean. You know that's that's the and we have a global world, unfortunately. So it's, dirty hippies. It's, <laughs> anyhow, Jay, I got yeah. a question for you. Okay. Are you a game show watcher? I used to be when I was young. I'm not anymore. Okay. I, well, I mean, Bob Barker passed away last yeah, week. And, at ninety nine. Yeah, a couple months short of his hundredth birthday. Yeah. Um, I remember vividly. Watching the Price is Right had a, and I remember Bob Barker talking about this. Yeah. How they had a very, very wide audience. He said that there were high school and college, they had done studies or something, or I don't know if CBS had done it or what, that uh, X amount, there were a lot of people like under 25 who watched The Price is Right all the time. Yeah. You know, like college kids. And then I was one of them. Uh huh. I was never the biggest game show guy. Yeah. The Price is Right. It was one that for some reason caught my eye all the time. Yeah. I, I, I watched that why. one. It Something ruined it for me, though. Yeah. When I found out that people were not randomly selected for that. Oh. You know, come on. You know, Rod Roddy, the old announcer. Yeah. Right. Rod passed away, too, but he always wore the flashy. Outfits with the big glasses. Yeah. But supposedly they were not randomly chosen. Huh. And that kind of... Yeah. It's kind of the $64,000 question of our life. Well, apparently, like... Because um, I always wondered why, like, a group of, like, 20 people... More than one was never picked yeah. from a group. You know, like, a college would be there. Yeah. And one person would get picked and nobody else would. Right. But yet somebody would always get picked. And apparently they knew someone was going to get picked from that group. Huh. So maybe not quite who, but it was not random like they portrayed it on television. Hmm. And then and I like Drew Carey a lot. Drew's really good. He, his show was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, was, Oswald kind of, or <laughs> kind of a pain in the butt. but <laughs> His old sitcom was pretty funny. But I yeah, the, the sitcom was good. Yeah, I thought I think Drew's very good as a host. And I think there's certain traits a game show host has to have that I can't quite put my finger on. Yeah. Um, but did you watch any other? Like, what game shows did you watch? Do you remember watching? Press Your Luck. Okay. Yeah. No whammies. No whammies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember... Yeah. Um, Family Feud. I go all oh, the yeah. way back to Richard Dawson. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. So I remember Ray Combs as the host more, hmm. um, and the guy Steve Harvey's a great host. Yeah, he's really good. But mm -hmm. you know Dawson's the guy they're all compared to, and right? So, but I, I remember Richard Dawson hosting it. Yeah. Um, and my mom and dad were huge Wheel of Fortune fans. My grandparents were too. So yeah, I, I watched my share of that. Yeah, I mean the the channel never um, changed from it's always the news and Wheel of Fortune. Just yeah. What well, was it? The ten thousand dollar pyramid? Is that what it yeah. was called? Yeah, I watched that. Twenty thousand dollar pyramid. Twenty. I don't well, know. Well, Dick Clark was the original host, right? And then uh, guy who looks like Eric Bischoff hosted after Davidson. John Davidson. Oh, was the, there was okay. also. I, there was a show, Chuck Woolery hosted a show called a Scrabble show. Yeah. And you played Scrabble. I think I watched that. Yeah. Maybe Chuck a was a, Chuck was times, a really yeah. good host. And um, my mom thought he was so handsome. She watched <laughs> Love Connection. Oh. And so, <laughs> yeah. I remember that <laughs> yeah. show too. And then there's one other one, because I remember the guys, the, the hosts, it was called Tic Tac Doe. Oh, yeah. I remember that. I think Wink Martindale yep. was the host. That's the guy's right. name was Wink. Wink Martindale. <laughs> yeah. Wink Martindale. Tic Tac Doe. There, there is... There is, uh, isn't there a football player, Wink Martindale There's now? A coach. Or a coach. He's a coach. Yeah, yeah, he, and he obviously was named after the game show host. Yeah, and I, I, was, <laughs> I looked him up actually when yeah. I first heard it to think if it was him. <laughs> Wink Martindale's like 92. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, there's no way he's coaching yeah. football. Football players taking orders from a game show host. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, Coach Martindale. <laughs> Coach Martindale, I, I will take I formation for 200, please. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, that's a Jeopardy. <laughs> oh yes, kind of one. Yeah. I watched. I watched some of that. Jeopardy was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I um, I like to watch when the college kids were on. That's what I always remember the the weeks that they did. That. Oh yeah, yeah. Because they they all they all won their tuition. There's the chance to right. win their tuition playing. So. Mm. Yeah, Jeopardy was a good show. I is that still on? Somebody who took Alex Trebek's I don't know. place. I know somebody he did. I passed forget. away recently too. And I, I could know. I could look it up. I yeah. suppose, but uh, was it the guy who won? Uh, uh, who was the guy who was the champion for months and months? Ken uh, Jennings, I think his name yeah, was. Yeah, I think they chose somebody famous. Oh. Uh, who hosts Jeopardy? Right. Well, let's find out. Uh, Oh, maybe. Um, oh, Miriam Bialik? Really? Who the hell is that? She's been on commercials for like some something or another. And Jennings, who took over for the late and legendary host Alex Trebek, received Emmy nominations, blah, 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 blah. I don't know who that is. Ken Jennings, yeah. Yeah, that's the guy. Miriam who... Bialik and Ken Jennings, I guess. Miriam Bialik? Yeah. What the hell is that? I don't... I, I have no idea. Um, I know who she acclaimed is. actress, author, she's, host, uh, and neuroscientist. She's what do you call? It? What was that show she was on? I don't know. I don't Blossom. watch. Blossom. I don't was watch that. TV. Really? Yeah. Was she actually Blossom? Or yeah, was she, I think that was her name on the show. Or was she? Uh, I don't remember. I don't watch that show very I much. I didn't really either. I just remember it being on. But anyway, Bob Barker, who hosted a show before that called Truth or Consequences. I remember that. Yeah, okay, I don't remember that. Vaguely. Okay, but Barker uh, yeah. retired, and when he retired, he had hosted game shows for 50 years. Hmm. 34 years on The Price is Right, 16 years on Truth or Consequences. Yeah. 2007, he retired. Wow. Now, there's a definite, definite difference between your daytime game show and then when they tried to switch and do some of these nighttime game shows yes. definite difference like in the just the presentation well, they try and, to drama it up right too much that's right the problem instead of just sticking to the show and letting the show sell itself yeah they had to try to take a commercial at the right minute and tried to right you know, have weird music it just yeah, you you have to just go with the formula you know, and I uh, they, they remember that remember when they tried to do Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? They tried to do that kind of spawned a bunch of imitators, yep. like like uh, American Idol did. Yeah, and then it kind of just fizzled out. So yeah, it was it was uh, I don't know, I don't know. I mean, I thing is, I don't know, I don't know that game shows. I I'm surprised so many of them are still on. I mean, Wheel of Fortune and Price is Right. I know Pat Sajak announced he's uh, yeah. coming back again. Um, he's posted that show for centuries. Boy, I, yeah. I remember he tried to do a talk show, and then it got canceled, and the guy who replaced him was hideous, yeah. and <laughs> nobody liked him. And right. They begged him to come back, and he's he's hosted it ever since. But, yeah. I mean, he's hosted it since the early 80s i would guess i mm -hmm. mean a long time and vanna white's still there i mean she's been there yeah. since you know, 40 years she's been there yeah that's crazy i mean you get a gig like that i guess you hold on to it i suppose i suppose they only work you know 100 days a year or something yeah I mean, uh i've he i've heard interviews with uh, chuck woolery talking about how they would try to film all the shows in two days yeah or something like that that the, the, it wasn't one show a day, they would herd a new audience in, and and, and um, because they didn't want to pay everybody to be there or something. So right. he goes, "It was actually a pretty good gig. It uh. sucked for those two days, but you know, I just went and played golf or something like that." Uh. Chuck's got his own podcast, so it's I, or he's got it with somebody. And yeah, he talks a lot of politics. He's pretty good to listen to, actually. Huh. I believe he's in his eighties. Really? So, yeah, huh. it's hard to believe. So. Actually, they, I don't know. Now I got to look it up. I think a lot of those uh, game show hosts were more conservative. Well, Sajak and Sajak is. Are, and yeah. So, I mean, I know Bob Barker was an animal rights guy. But yeah. I don't know. 
I don't know I that just, that meant anything. Yeah. I just remember Bob Barker. Well, obviously from Prices, right? But uh, Happy Gilmore as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Woolery is 82 years old. Wow. Young. Huh. Yeah, holy cow. Yeah. 82. Yeah, he started, he hosted Scrabble in 1984, mm. 84 to 90, and I remember. I, okay. Funny thing is, I just remember those rainy days, because I wasn't allowed in the summer to lay around the house and watch TV, yeah. so it was, and my mom would have missed her soaps anyway, so oh, yeah. we only had one TV, so it was, you know, get out of my house, um, but Scrabble was on right before Price is Right, and I don't remember, and then... Family Feud was on, and then it went off the air when they switched hosts. Yeah, when when they came back with Ray Combs, and I I don't you know, um, and they've had a whole bunch of hosts. I mean, Louis Anderson hosted it for a while. Um, whoever the guy is, Al from Home Improvement did it for a while. Really, mm-hmm. huh. I can't think of his real name, but hmm. anyhow, so. We shared our game yeah. show memory. Yes, absolutely. So now on to business. Ah. Why do we always have to do that? Why don't Ooh. we just tell game show stories? Yeah, that would probably be a lot more enjoyable than some of this I, stuff. I gotta share one. I gotta share yeah. one. Okay. Um so Richard Dawson is uh I, I remember he said the the question was name an Arab country. Yeah. And this lady said Israel. And <laughs> Dawson looked out at the crowd, and I, you could tell he was trying to think of something funny to say. Yeah. And just couldn't think of anything. And he goes, All right, show me Israel. <laughs> <laughs> and he and, and he just wrote, I can't believe nobody said Israel. <laughs> 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 Israel didn't get any. Oh, it was he just played it up? It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Israel not exactly <laughs> Arabs. <laughs> huh. yeah, they don't get along too good. No, no. <laughs> huh. All right. Anyhow. Yeah. And I could think of good ones if I if I had it, but that's for another day. Business must come in, Jay. Can, yes. can, let me just say one thing here first. Okay. And we're talking about police officers in schools, SROs, student resource officer, just, just to lay the groundwork. Would you agree or disagree with me, Jay? Discipline is one of the biggest problems right now in our education system yes yeah i mean it has been for a long time discipline is a huge thing and not teaching any valuable content as and holding kids to a minimum level of of expectation not demanding anything any excellence yeah yeah those are the two things that I, i just um the people in charge seem to have no idea what to do Right. That's the other part of it that gets to me. It's like you call yourselves education professionals, yet when things get worse and worse and worse, you have no answers to how to fix it. Right. Except to shift the blame to others. That, that's, you know, shift it to politicians or to parents or to whoever. Student discipline has been a problem for decades. Yes. It just simply has been. Now, whether that's a at home thing which i'm sure partly it is yeah um but you know somebody comes to my house there's expectations of how they're gonna act okay yeah um and certain things are gonna get you kicked out of my house okay can i just say that yeah okay so if schools are not free to because one of the one of the problems i have we're going to talk about is when the state comes in to try to do something it's always a one size fits all solution right and one size fits all solutions work zero percent of the time we have independent school districts for a reason now yeah sometimes they're independent to the point where i don't like that either 
<laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. ultimately, you got to pick something here. And the idea that we are going to, we, the idea that that we are going to have discipline with all these rules around it. Mm-hmm. And believe me, the kids know the rules. Kids aren't as dumb sometimes as we think they are. Yeah. They know what a person can and can't do. Mm-hmm. You know, this isn't this isn't nuns it's that not, can yeah. snap your hands with rulers and yeah. administration, everybody will back them up. It's not like that here. Yeah. Ninety percent of the time you know if you're breaking the rules. Of course. And there's maybe ten percent around the fringes where it's yeah, I didn't know I didn't know the speed limit was fifty. Yeah. <laughs> you know, where Sorry, I didn't know I was disrupting the class or, you know, if you're whispering to your neighbor or, you know, things like that. Some but, of it is open to question. I agree there's a gray area. But I, most of the time, kids know when they're breaking the rules. Should you ever be punching another student? Absolutely no. not. Should you ever be punching a teacher or staff member? No. Should you be doing drugs in the school? No. Should you be hollering and cursing out people, uh, staff members? No. Yeah. You know, it. most of this stuff is not rocket science. So why has it gotten, I mean, I just, let me, before we even get into this, uh, what is your take on why it has gotten to this point? What What has happened that, we don't take discipline seriously anymore. Well, to bring back our earlier discussion, dirty hippies. <laughs> well, I mean, really, I mean, as opposed to a clean hippie. <laughs> I mean, really, I, our the people that we've elected to office have sold us down the river. They are stripping us of parental rights. They are empowering kids far beyond what they're capable of handling at their age. Okay, now I want to stop you right there. Yeah. Because those same people, though, make it 21 to smoke a cigarette. Yeah. Make it, uh, you know, 18 to gamble. Make it, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, why is it then, on the one hand, the young person is not capable of making it? And I agree, they aren't. Yeah. On the other hand... If they're 10 and they want a sex change, then they should be free. Why is it so inconsistent like that? Great question. Uh, politics. The you politics know, is probably. Is, is one, it? Yeah. You know, I mean, look at who's lobbying, who's throwing money around. I, that That's a lot of it. You know, these. I don't know I, where that kind of falls apart, I guess, is. Well, maybe not. When you look at the lobby money, tobacco, big tobacco money versus big health care money, right? Mm-hmm. You know, obviously the health care companies have more money to throw around. No question. You know, it, it's close. a lot of the reason why liquor stores weren't open on Sundays in this state for a long time because it was, it was a better financial proposition for them not to have them open. True. And it was also the bar and restaurant lobby yes was against it as well and that's a bigger bigger lobby you'd be surprised the the sort of power that they possess i mean it, you, you'd, you'd be amazed at it um it certainly had to do nothing to do with sunday blue laws had nothing to do with christianity or anything like that keeping the sabbath day Holy right! <laughs> that was the, that was the truth 130 years ago. It wasn't the truth anymore. But yeah, it took forever, forever to get that law changed. And uh, really, I mean, that's a lot of it. The teachers' unions throw so much money around, and they are are working actively to deconstruct American society, our, our laws, our norms, our morals, our mores, all of that stuff is under fire from the teachers unions because they're communists. The people who run them okay, but why, at the head of them want all, to destroy American culture. Okay, but I got to assume there's some teachers who don't want to do that. No, but the people at the top do. But why don't those teachers do something about it? I mean, why don't they... Well, why don't people Maybe vote that's... in new people at, uh, for county attorney? Or, you know, 
they yeah. don't know anything about the people that run these unions. Well, if I'm a teacher and somebody's speaking in my name, they're going to speak accurately. Well, they or, should. And people think, should care that much. Of course, there's a huge teacher shortages everywhere. I mean, maybe part of the problem is that the people who disagree with them have left the profession. And that's they're, possible. They're teaching in private school or they're teaching at parochial school or they don't want to be part of that system anymore. They've retired mm -hmm. early. They get me out of here. Yeah. <laughs> before, you know. Well, and there has been a lot of teachers that have left and not come back, especially because of discipline problems. And student, it's gotten to the point, and it started getting to the point when I was teaching in Minneapolis where students were allowed. And this is 20 years to, ago. Yeah, too, to I mean. verbally abuse teachers and to accuse teachers of things and the teachers had no ground to stand on the the students were allowed to do it and not only were they allowed to do it they were always given the benefit of the doubt no matter what they said let me ask you something because i'm going to tell you something right now if i'd have mouthed off big time to a teacher yeah my parents would have not taken my side in that yeah they they would have believed the teacher over me. Yeah. And they would have sided with the adult. And mm -hmm. I mean, and maybe it's not a question of believing, but it would have been unacceptable to them. Right. For me to do that in any circumstances. Um, at church, you know, anywhere. Yeah. And believe me, I'd have been dealt with. Is there a lack of that? Is do the yeah. parents side with the kids? Oh, the teachers mean. Oh, they they made little Johnny be little Johnny lost at uh, at gym class and feels bad and needs Zoloft. I mean, is there is there an element of that going on? Broken There's families. Some of that. Are there a lot of kids who are fatherless or I mean, is is which again I blame the left a lot for the breakdown of the family. I mean, um, what are the dynamics that are causing all that? Yeah, I mean, there's some of that where parents want to be their kids' friends. There's all the crap that comes out of the psychology profession about, oh, don't your your child have your children have such fragile egos. You can't discipline them. You can't speak crossways to them. You can't look at them wrong. You can't breathe <laughs> on them. You just you let them do what they're gonna do, and, and they gotta express themselves. So I think psychology is a huge problem. Well, I think the teachers' unions are a huge everybody's problem. Everybody's got a uh, mental illness now, right? right? And there's that too. You you can't discipline them because you know of, of mental illness. We have to treat this and medicate this. Phony, you know, and fake. So you've got that stuff going on. I think you've got parents that buy into this stuff and actually trust these people. You've got other parents that are scared that they're going to get slapped with a lawsuit or get their kids taken away. There's, you some, know? there's some strong, heavy-handed stuff like that. Look what happened in Virginia. Yeah. That was, uh, they ended up, the Attorney General of the United States has a list of these people who've gone, What is whatever that business hit of his business, yeah. uh, they were targets, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't know. The angry white man. <laughs> yes. Go but check and see if they have guns. <laughs> or they got an American flag in their front yard. Damn it. Right. But the whole time, you've got professions. You know, you, you've got the teacher's union who is skewing things in, in favor of the child. You've got big money medicine, you know, uh, that, A, they're getting they're getting paid to push these prescriptions on kids. Oh, yeah. So they're making money hand over fist. And you've got these idiots in the psychology profession that are are talking all about how fragile children's egos are and you can't discipline them. And, you know, we've got to stop listening to the professionals because that's that's really how the liberals have built this up. What, what we're experiencing now is you have to trust the professionals, whether it's climate change, whether it's how to care for your children, what well, any of it, you have well, to then, you you have to trust the experts because well, then, the experts then why don't they the trust the CIA and the FBI then? The liberals probably do. I don't, I don't think or the, the far left because they control them. Well, now they know. do, but for years they haven't. They've right. said the opposite about that. By the way, aren't police professionals? Who doesn't trust them? Well, they're not the experts, though. Oh, okay. It's the people who make the regulations that are the experts. I Those love, are the people you have to trust. I love somebody, you know, quoting who couldn't be a police officer for five minutes, 
trying to tell police officers what to do. Right. And look, I've said this before, Jay, and I'll say this till I'm blue in the face. Yeah. I am not an apologist for law enforcement. I know you're not either. No. Nope. Okay, law enforcement. There's things law enforcement does that I just hate. By the way, can I say a couple? Yeah. Go when ahead. It's our the, podcast. Yeah. When I get pulled over, this happened very few times. Yeah. If you're a police officer and you ask me where I'm going, you know what answer you I gave to you? None of your business. This is my car. I'm on a street I pay for, and I don't have to tell you where I'm going. And I say that, but it's none of your business. They don't like it, but they say, I don't have to tell you where I'm going. Yeah. If I got a tail light out, what does that have to do with where I'm going? Right. So, you know, police do things to me that breed distrust. And I think they need to understand that. And I think they're unwilling to a point, you know, they're, they're willing to do whatever the Minneapolis City Council tells them to do. Yeah. But I'm the angry white guy, so I guess they're not going to listen to me. But one thing they could do is just tell me, hey, uh, you're going six miles over the speed limit. You're going to do whatever you're going to do. But I'm not telling you where I'm going. I'm not telling you where I came from. There's yeah. no reason you need to know that. Right. So, I, again, I can be a prick, but I feel like that question's out of bounds. Yeah, it is out of bounds. You know, it's like, what do you think? You just come from we have the freedom to travel. Well, <laughs> you know, it's. I, I can drive on a street. It doesn't matter what time yeah. it is. Nope. So I, I have real issues with some of that stuff. I've told police that before. I've had conversations with them about it, you know, just. Um, and, you know, I, they're. Well, you know, we're, su- we're supposed to get information. Like, for what purpose? Mm hmm. What know, information do you need other than I was speeding or I've got a tail light out or whatever? My yeah. tabs are expired or what? That's, I mean, that's the law. That's the information you need. Yeah, you know, it's just it's very frustrating because part of me wants to support the law enforcement. Part of me understands that that job is difficult and dangerous. Absolutely. Part of me understands that these police. I sit here and I make twenty, thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars more a year than these people who risk their lives. And it's kinda of like uh, you know, it's kind of amazing that, yeah. <laughs> that you know that that's the truth. So I I do have a have a um you know, I, I would like to be more supportive than I am. Did this business of, you know, targeting people for ticky tack crap. I didn't have your yeah. seatbelt. Oh well you're fighting crime, dude. Yeah. yeah, go fight some crime. I did have my seatbelt on when I drove five blocks to the gas station. I mean, I, I that kind of crap I just don't understand. I'll never support it. Um, I know it's not the police officers necessarily themselves. It's the policymakers that I blame more. But if I were a police officer and I saw somebody, I would just, I'd just let it go. I know maybe it's end of the month and they need the money, yeah. but it's just kind of... Yeah. It's just things that I just I just can't stand, and so I. But 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 my point is, is that I don't fall on either the two loudest, and I think this is that way with a lot of issues. The people who hate the police, want to get rid of them, want to kill them all, mm-hmm. are on one side. The people who think police are always right are on one, and that's who you hear from. Right. You know, you, you hear nothing but the people who yell and scream the loudest. Yep. Now, I will always fight for their right to actually go up and break up groups of protesters that are blocking a road, for their their right to go in and arrest somebody that's guilty of a crime. Yeah, again, like, that's the policymakers screwing up basic law enforcement. Absolutely. Again, it trusts the experts. You know, and you got to bring them all in. You got to bring in the government. You got to bring in the psychologists. You got to bring in the social workers. You got to bring in the, you know, the educators. And and these are the people that are making our laws. Right. I mean, uh, you got a domestic violence situation, you know, some guy's beating the hell out of his wife. And you're going to bring in a psychologist, bring in Dr. Phil, <laughs> or are you going to bring in somebody who's going to save that woman's life? Right. And those children's lives. Well, look what just happened in. Portland was a Portland where they decided that they weren't going to that they were going to increase funding for these alternate forms of intervention into emergencies. <laughs> uh, Portland, good luck. What a, what a 
Good what luck. A, you know, I've been to Portland. It's a decent town, and I just it was was it's it's going it's going the way of New York. Well, it's actually going more the way of San Francisco, unfortunately. Well, that's that's the left yeah. coast. That's what they're doing, unfortunately. And it's funny because Oregon is one of those states outside of Portland. Yeah, Oregon is. As red as you can be of a state. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's just, you drive 20 miles outside of Portland, you're in a different, you're in a <laughs> different world. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just too bad that one city has to destroy a state like that. It's just, it's, it's a beautiful state, too. It's, yeah. It's so awful. Portland's mm. one of the worst cities ever. Um, <laughs> so anyway, so Jay, these student resource officers these police that are what what are they exactly they're 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 in the school during the day they're on call what is they are in the school during the day i mean i don't know if every school district works the same but from what what i understand in, in at least in the majority of school districts they're actually in the school during the day so they they is it just i assume it's just more like the high schools and yeah for the most part it's usually the high schools, uh, no, no. middle schools, maybe. Here's another thing. Yeah. Here's another thing. Everybody wants safe schools. Yep. Okay. Well, there's certain things in order to have safe schools. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, one of them maybe is the presence of law enforcement. Yeah. I mean, look at it this way. If you were going to pretend you're the villains in Home Alone, <laughs> you're Joe Pesci and the other guy who was the voice of Wonder Years. Um, I can't think of his real name, but you are going to go rob houses. Yeah. Let's say five houses had a great big dog in the front yard, or five of those houses were gun owners. Yeah. Or five of those houses had pretty sophisticated surveillance stuff. Right. Instead of say five houses didn't, which houses are you more likely to rob? The ones that aren't. Okay. Now. If I'm going to go cause trouble out of school, and I don't mean necessarily shoot it up, mm-hmm. but if I'm going to do that, where am I? If I'm going to go shoot up something, yeah, where am I going to go? I'm going to go where I know there's no defense. Right. I'm not going to go shoot up the local. I'm not going to go rob the local gun range. Yeah. I'm not going to go shoot up a police officer's yeah. <laughs> headquarters. Well, I mean, it's, it's where am I going to go? I'm going to go where I know they're defenseless. Well, it's a na- it, it, it's a natural law. I mean, nature abhors a vacuum, right? And you look at a river, right? That water's going to go anywhere it can, and <laughs> yeah. where there's a hard barrier, it's not going to go there. It's not going to try to go there, right? <laughs> Evil really is the same way. It is going to go wherever it can. And when there is a hard and fast boundary or barrier to a crime being committed, they will go somewhere else. Criminals don't want to be caught. Criminals don't want resistance. They want to be able to do what they do in the safety and cover of night, you know, so to speak, metaphorically. Sure. So you you take those things away and you create an environment where it's ready for the picking you know and you want to think word doesn't get around you know to in communities about oh guess what i got away with at school today or you know people know uh i can probably say this now because it's been removed enough when i my older two kids were at cooper I know there was at one point where kids who did not go to that school, somebody showed up with a machete and like hacked some kid in the arm and the kids were on the bus at the time. And I don't know what ever happened to that. I don't remember hearing about it from the school either. How can the school not say something? I don't know. But I know Robbinsdale schools, I mean, there were issues with parents not finding out about lots of things that were happening, like violent incidences in the schools, uh, people bringing weapons to school, even though they weren't discharged or or brandished. What has gone on there? You know, I mean, and I'm a Cooper graduate. Yeah. You know, and I mean, I'm a proud one. I mean, I, uh, my wife went to Cooper. 
Uh, her sisters went to Cooper. So did my sister. I mean, you know, I go to yeah. every reunion and get together, and <laughs> I mean, I, it's just embarrassing is what's yeah taking place. I mean, I'm ashamed of it almost. I mean, I'm not ashamed I went when I did. This was 25 right. years ago or more now. But it's just like, what happened? What's happened? The teacher's union. I mean, it, it's that simple. I mean, they, so the union is preventing discipline from happening, even though the teachers are the victims a lot of times yeah. of these things. Because the teachers' unions are trying to break things down. They they want kids choosing different genders. They want kids to well, how does to that rule benefit the them? They, though I just. It's something I can't understand. Is it just politics first? Yeah, politics first. They're just going left as the Democrats go? Yeah, I think that's a lot of it. You know, I, teachers unions for a long time have promoted ideals that line up with, you know, the Communist Manifesto. And that's weird because but, it, it's weird because there was a time in this country where teachers unions fought for teachers to get better wages right. or teachers to get good retirement or right. teachers to, which I have no issue now with. Now they fight for them to stay yeah. home and not teach yeah, and I keep know. kids in, in uh, learn from home situations, <laughs> right? Wear masks until yeah. you get cancer from them. Exactly. I mean, I, what, what has happened to that? Yeah. I got no problem with asking for more wages. I mean, I, I'd yes. like to ask for more wages. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> yeah. You know, my dad was a teamster, so was my grandfather. They wanted more money too. There's nothing wrong with that. But there's just something wrong when the unions don't seem to be about that anymore. They're not about getting teachers economically uh, in better positions. No, they're about getting black teachers. Uh, Jobs saved over that of white teachers, like right. in Minneapolis. Hey, judge people by the content of their character, right? Absolutely. I think if I made, you know what's funny? What? You know what's funny? If I went to a certain audience, mm -hmm. and I and I'm I'm a rare person on people would consider me quote unquote on the right yeah. who believes affirmative action at one time was necessary in this country. You could say blacks are free and equal like we did with the 13th, 14th, 15th amendments and it didn't really change anything. Yeah. I do believe affirmative action was necessary. I don't think it was intended to go on forever. Right. I think the courts have made the right decisions recently in in uh, walking some of that back and making it more merit-based. Mm -hmm. However, if I walked in front of certain groups and said, you know what, I'm going to judge people not by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character, yeah. they'd probably get booed out of the building. You think Martin Luther King would be, you think they'd stand and cheer a speech he makes if no. they really sat there and listened to it? Because I consider Dr. King one of the greatest Americans who ever lived. Yeah. And when you listen to his words, and I mean, when you really listen, you know, he is preaching to what a colorblind society should be. Right. Well, he also preached nonviolence. Yeah, He's exactly. like, let yeah. them let them beat you and let the world see them beat you because they will become sympathetic and to you. And his tactics you cannot worked. Fight back. That's the thing. And it now worked. That side, the left, has totally thrown that out. And it's all about riot, scream. Censor uh, somebody you don't agree with. Yep. I wonder what he would think if he were alive. Become the that. oppressor. You know, yeah, it, nice. it's... Yeah. Okay. This is from cbsnews.com. This article is from August 17th. And there's a there's a hand cbs.com has a handful of these articles. They're one of the few people actually reporting this. Yeah. Uh, you can't find a whole lot of news on this. Um a provision in the education bill which was only 200 pages uh. signed by Governor Goofy in May prohibits school-based officers from placing students in the prone position. And I'm not quite sure what that means. That means where they're laying flat on their stomach. With the hands out and the legs out and all that, yeah. like a snow angel. Okay. Um, uh, in the prone position or in holds that subject them to comprehensive restraint on the head, neck, and across most of the torso. Wait a second. Now, 
they can't put them into the prone position at all? No. What? That's where these kids can't fight back. Or reach for something. Right. What do you mean you can't even put them in the prone position? So you can't restrain them by restrain them by the head, neck, or torso. So what are you supposed to do? Grab their nostril, hook it onto their toenail, and put them in a leg lock? What is, what is that? You can put them in a Boston crab, maybe. <laughs> I prefer Would the sharpshooter. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't outlined that yet. Some law enforcement f- officials don't give them any ideas. <laughs> I'd love to see. Uh, there's kids I'd love to see. Put them. Put them in a. Put them in a <laughs> figure four. And listen to them cry for their mom. <clears throat> Not saying I didn't uh, do that once or twice as a kid. I might have. I probably um, did too. Some law enforcement officials say that effectively bans common tactics for breaking up fights and other dangerous situations. Jeff. Potts, executive director of Minnesota Chiefs of Police. That's racist. Yeah. They can't be chiefs. Yeah. Chiefs of Police Association wrote to Walls this week to outline the concerns, uh, blah, 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 prohibiting the, uh, Potts wrote, prohibiting the most basic measure of safety, restraining and controlling the aggressor in a fight severely impacts the ability to intervene, stop an altercation, or protect everyone's safety. I mean, some kid could get killed because S- somebody's going to have to get killed because people aren't breaking up fights. Somebody will get killed before it happens. Yeah, it's going to happen that way. Walls told reporters Wednesday that the law includes quote exceptions for health and safety of students and officers. Oh, okay. Isn't that what so, it is every time you're yeah. breaking up a fight? So what do they have to have? A little handbook with them? <sighs> There's a big fight going on. Okay, hold on. Rule 17B-43 says that I can... I mean, is that what they're supposed to do? Uh, maybe they should have the DNR write that one, too. Yeah. The DNR would take an hour to do it. Yeah. Ten people would die before that. The disagreement comes as schools across the country grapple with a rise in discipline issues coupled with increased scrutiny on the police. The St. Paul, Minneapolis, Hopkins school districts eliminated armed police in 2020, but Bloomington decided to add three middle schools to supplement the officers already on patrol in the two high schools. So this is kind of a problem of their own making. They don't want the police there, but as the discipline gets worse, now they want them there again, but now they want them there, but tell them what to do. Right. So it's like, well, pick your poison. What? You know, well, Minneapolis and Hopkins got rid of them and Bloomington, to their credit, added some. But now we see the police departments themselves yeah, not, saying thanks, but no thanks. We're out. You know what? I wouldn't do it either. Peace out. Peace out, Napoleon. I mean, yeah. every single time an incident happens, they're going to be look, looking to try. The first time a minority kid gets put in a headlock, right. they're going to sue. You know that's coming. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it'll just do nothing but, you know, obfuscate the issue of of uh, discipline. If she won't be disciplined anymore, it'll be the, the person who claims to be the victim who was probably the aggressor. Yeah. Um, in Anoka, the uh, Anoka Hennepin District, which yeah. is the largest in the state, by the way, um, has had a, quite the issue of this. Um, some lawmakers are calling for a change, blah, 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 blah. Um, how can this is the chief of police in Blaine, Brian Bidet? Okay. Pod Dead Knee. How well, is it spelled? P O D A N Y. I thought yeah. that was a B. Pod Knee. Or Podani? Pod, Pod Annie. That's what we'll just call it. Okay. That's, it's a compound word. Okay. Pod Annie. said, how can we expect our staff to go in the school and work there every day when they're constantly worried about being sued instead of just focusing on doing their job? The law limits, well, we already said it, police leaders throughout the state have joined with some Republicans asking for clarity on the law and even asking for a new special session hmm. to deal with it. Um. Lisa DeMuff, a representative from Cold Spring. Where's that? Cold Spring's up a little west of St. Cloud. Not much. It's real close. 
Okay. Yeah. Quote, this is about letting our school student res- school resource officer use the de-escalation tools that they are trained in because no one will be safe schools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a special session? I don't know that that's... Right, like I don't know that I want them making more rules. Yeah, a special session could go either way. I right. Think. I mean, there needs to be clarification brought, and I know they're asking our wonderful uh, attorney general to to bring clarification, but it's uh, I don't know what's worse. worse. Yeah. The Anoka Hennepin District, which is the state's largest, has said they are planning on pulling. Their SROs. Um, uh, Champlin Police Department said it will not enter into a contract with the Anoka Hennepin District until this is changed. That's Champlin Park uh, High School, Jackson Middle School. Um, as the Champlin Police Chief, I cannot, in good faith, this is the chief talking, uh, Glenn Schneider. As the Champlin Police Chief, I cannot, in good faith, put our school resource officers in a position that doesn't doesn't allow them to use uh, their independent judgment and professional training in response to incidents on school property. I mean, police do this all the time. They intervene in stuff all the time, yeah. don't they? Yeah. Domestic disputes, mm-hmm. road rage. Yeah. Police de-escalate. That's, that's their 90% of their job. Uh, but Moorhead also has the, the city of Moorhead. Yeah, has pulled out uh, SRO officers as well. City of Moorhead says it has reassigned its school resource officers back to patrol duty due to recent changes in Minnesota law that produ- prohibit school officers from restraining or using force unless it is deemed reasonable, which, of course, the word reasonable is pretty undefined as well. Moorhead Police Department says the school safety is still a top priority, uh, so on and so on and so on. I, I, I am concerned about a special session, though, because I think it'll lead to a lot of hemming and hawing. Yeah, I think so, too. You're going to second-guess things. Um, also, Coon Rapids Police, and this is uh, via care11.com, Coon Rapids Police uh, has Anoka Hennepin District, pulled out of yeah. Anoka Hennepin District, as has Anoka County Sheriff's. Uh, Clay County sheriffs are also pulling its SRO from two districts. And even Hennepin County Sheriff's Office has removed theirs from Rockford School, uh, Rockford High School. I didn't think that would be a, a bad one considering all of the high schools in Hennepin County. But, I mean, I've got to hand it. I, I, you know, this uh, new sheriff that replaced Sheriff Drinky Drink, uh yeah, Wit, I think is her name. Yes, uh, Dewana Wit said in a press conference. But when the need to respond to a serious incident arises, they need to know, meaning their her officers, they need to know that they will not be held liable for appropriately fulfilling that duty. And and I don't can't disagree. With I don't that. disagree one bit. No. No, Rockford is kind of a smaller city. I thought that was in Wright County, but I guess it's not. But um, it- Rockford. It's yeah. got to be on the border. It's got to be close, yeah. Um, uh, there's a few other ones that are considering it. Rogers. Um, Rogers Police Chief Daniel Wills says his department uh, will stay for now. Uh, he spoke with the superintendent, teachers, officers. I don't know if they've reached sort of like a tentative agreement there, but... Uh, yeah. For now, he's decided that he will keep the SROs there. Um, okay. They've gone through some additional training and so on, but um, but it sounds like that's pretty tenuous. Yeah, Rockford is a city in Wright and Hennepin County. Oh, okay. It's split. Now, that's a pretty small city. I wonder if they have a big police department. Maybe the county has yeah. to take over a lot of the... Population's 4,300. Oh, because they're bigger uh, than I thought. Well, at the 2010 census. I don't okay. know if it shrunk, but... Um, yeah, so I don't know. And, and I don't know who all's in that district either. Um, 
Rockford High School is that part of a bigger district that includes like Delano and Maple Plain and stuff like that? I thought Plain it was the Buffalo like district. I thought it, that's it, what are they, they might be part of Buffalo. Um, Weird that they're in both counties. I did not know that. Amazing what I learn every yeah, day. Yeah, absolutely. I thought, you know, independence was kind of as far as it went. But yeah, Rockford split. Um, oh, they do have their own school district, uh, 883. Really? Yes. Um, I don't know who all is in there. It Do- doesn't really matter, I guess, to the conversation. Well, I would assume but... it's Rockford High School. I, they probably have a couple of elementary schools and middle school. But... Yeah. Well, it looks like that's it. Schools. Rockford Elementary School. It's an arts magnet school. Rockford Middle School. Center for Environmental Studies oh, and Rockford High School, IB World School. So yeah, this this whole district screwed up. Now, I now can, here, again, yeah. I, I I favor independent school districts. All right, but again, three schools in a district, and they're is, all messed up. But I mean, <laughs> well, the elementary school, but they all have their own district, their yeah. own building, their own superintendent. This is where the state has to come in and break this up. Yeah. I mean, they really do. They have to break up these little districts that are costing so much. I don't know. I don't know what they're costing, but I'm more concerned about what's going on in, you know, uh, these Minneapolis public schools, in in Robbinsdale public schools, in St. Louis Park schools. I mean, because, I mean, now what's happening, you know, when you, in Okahannapin, you're going to have school districts that are a heck of a lot more dangerous, and they're teaching a dangerous ideology. And so you're breeding discontent into students, which is going to make them more violent. I mean, aren't they? When you sit and teach people of color that they're devalued in society and it's the white man's fault, aren't you breeding discontent into people that they're going to then take out on their classmates? Yeah, and then the white people can't have to be anti-racist. They have to be, they have to get down in front of minorities and beg them for forgiveness. You know, they're, they're taught to devalue their whiteness. And I'll tell you what, you know, one of the guys... Who who I consider responsible for this Ooh. is Barack Obama. Yeah, Barack uh, Obama's half white, yet he rejects any whiteness at all. Mm-hmm. Only identifies as a black guy. He's half white. You know, I mean, why why does he just say, you know what? I'm proud of both. Yeah. Well, he's well, not. He isn't. He's ashamed of it. It's disgusting. Yeah. It just is. I mean. I don't denounce my German ancestry because we fought them in two wars. Yeah. I mean, I, sorry, my family was here long before that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, should I go apologize to a Jewish guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm just being a doorknob here, but, you know. Yeah, but, the, but but you're also teaching minorities that they can't succeed. That's yeah. the thing that really gets to me is is trying to portray it as, well, you're black, you don't have a chance in this. Well, that's a lie, first of all. Right. It's maybe the biggest lie of all. I mean, you have a greater chance in the United States than anywhere else in the world, in my opinion, to be what you want to be, even today, which is saying something because this country's declined so much in my lifetime but i believe i still believe that i still believe in that you know i still believe america is the land of opportunity yeah i do too and all we have to do is take the take the governor off take the take the shackles off you know and just let it do its job and when there are in actual inequities that come up in the system we deal with them well, again, equal opportunity is very different from equal outcome. Absolutely. We can't manage that. I mean, in, in the schools as well. I've always said this. How can you give everybody the same test score? It's not possible. There's no such thing as closing the achievement gap. Right. That will never happen, ever. But now, and I think this was also in Portland, where recently they decided that you cannot, you cannot, <laughs> for a grade to give somebody an incomplete or an F any longer. It 
they've taken it off the table. You can't do it. Well, so if somebody doesn't do the work, they here, don't get an incomplete. You know what? I had a professor in college who told me he had a great line about grades. Um, he said, I don't give you grades. You earn them. Right. And so, <laughs> you know, this is all part of the, the effort to dumb down the system. So everybody feels good. Everybody passes. Everybody... Uh, and there's no accountability at all. I mean, you wonder why our kids get dumber and dumber. Um, look no further than a statement like that. Yeah. I know. And how does this, like, I always say this too, for the teachers, how does this benefit the teachers? Your school looks worse, is more dangerous. For teachers as well, not just students. Exactly. So how is how are you benefiting from this? I, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know who's they benefit benefiting from, from it. I don't know who is. But I mean, it was put into law. Democrats signed it. I, I there were I, if I remember right, there are Republicans that signed on to this sure too, there weren't were. there? Probably. This mess. Yeah, there were because this also had to do deal. Remember, we talked about how there were some schools where they weren't going to be able to get uh, an online PSEO program because of their demanding that they follow the religious tenets of the school oh yeah that was part of this bill as well and so yes there were republicans that signed on to this bill as far as i'm concerned both parties suck yeah i mean i love david hand's line oh the extreme dfl blah blah it's like you know what dude i got an idea go raise some money i mean just Call for a special session. You know, I'll tell you what. Every time a Republican chair puts out a press release, I just cringe. Yeah. I just cringe. I just go, ugh. You have to do that. Ugh. Yeah. You have to make it about that. Just make it about the kids. Yeah. You can win on this issue if you're uh, smart about huh? it. But instead, you have to put out the usual partisan garbage that no one wants to hear. Right. What the hands going on over there? Uh, By the way, you find that voter fraud yet, Mr. Hand? I'm just waiting if you're three years, I'm waiting for that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just I, it, look, the schools are a mess. They're getting worse all the time. Um I don't know what the solution is. Gee, you you and I have done a lot of education podcasts in six years here. Yes, we have. And it's gotten worse, and I've gotten fewer and fewer ideas. It's ugly. It is ugly, I'll tell you what. And how, I mean, everybody knows. you. There is nobody that is intellectually honest that will tell you our schools are better off for this. You know? And there's no one where you're going to point me to an issue and, and where the police have come into a school as an SRO and that they've gone around the school terrorizing kids uh, where such a lie. It, it, yeah, this is, they, they, if they go out of their way not to do that. Right. Quite frankly, that's what I believe. In more cases than most with these SRO uh, officers. They go around trying to create positive relationships so that there won't be the fear of the police right. and the they distrust can, of the police. This is actually a good program for the most part. And I'm going to say something, too, about this. I think one of the things not being talked about, of course, wasn't talked about by the corporate media. Even the police have not said this. Is if a fight or something or something breaks out, Having somebody there on campus to yeah. respond, uh -huh. you think about that for me. You think about the response time uh -huh. for what could happen versus, you know, what can be de escalated. If two guys get in a fight yeah. and there's an officer there to break it up, you got to dial 911 uh -huh. and wait 10, 15 minutes for somebody to, maybe not that long. What can happen with that fight? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A There's lot. an armed officer standing there. A lot. I bet that doesn't break out into a fight of 200. Right. But by the time somebody gets there, 
I mean, that, but you know as well as I do, Jay, in an emergency, say you have a heart attack and you fall on the floor. Yeah. How fast you get help saves your life. And I think that's a point not being made by anybody that, look, you don't, you want your kid to be safe at a school. You want your kid, there's going to be, these officers get pulled out. And that response time, if something happens, yeah. is now on the table. Mm-hmm. And maybe the police station is 10, 10 miles away, five miles away. Right. That could be life or death for somebody. It's yeah. possible. You know, somebody brings a gun into the school. I mean, I don't know. Anything could happen. And I, I don't think that's being thought about. Either. It's not even being mentioned by any of these people. No, you know, and a lot of these, at least in the metro, a lot of these schools have like a security staff. Yeah, they got uh, RoboCops there. Uh, no, I mean they've got real people that are monitoring. Like I know in Robbinsdale, oh. they they do at the high schools have people that are monitoring cameras, walking the halls. Oh, but they, that kind of. But thing. they work in tandem with the SROs. Yeah. You know, I. So removing them from the school is just well. I'll tell you what. It's a fast track to. I I think you're going to see a stampede over the next few weeks, and I'm going to tell you the first incident that happens Mm -hmm. where the police get blamed, they're all going to pull out. Yeah, they're all going to go. You're going to screw you. Yep, we're all leaving. You're going to see that for sure. And you'll also see in the schools where they have pulled out already an increase in violent crime. Of course. You're because going. it's going to be acceptable. But here's the thing. You'll never hear about it because the school districts will never let that information out. Well, and, and uh, it'll it'll make it its way into. And I believe maybe we'll see an uptick in angry parents in school board meetings because of it, because their schools will be unsafe. Well, they're. Yeah, well, the parents should be there angry already, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> they should be there every waking minute pissed off. Yeah, there's <laughs> enough going on that they should be. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'll tell you what. Uh, the public schools are just <sighs> just enough to get you to drink cyanide. I just, I, <laughs> I just, it's, it's just a mess. I don't know how else to say it, but... You've got restrictions on, to, and you know what? I I can't, I can't blame the schools for all of it because whatever the teachers' union lobbies for or says or wants, it takes somebody to pass a law to do this. I yeah. mean, you know, they're already limited in discipline as it is. They're limited based on race, on gender, on on you know who, what class of victims you can be. Right, and. Adding law enforcement into that, just I mean, maybe we need to go back to the days of the nuns and the rulers. I don't know. Reform schools. Maybe we need to go back to that. I mean, I was going to mention that earlier. If if nuns agreed not to teach religion in public school, would it be a good idea to come and have nuns teach all the classes in public school so they can hit people with the rulers? I think they'll have none of it. Yeah. Well, (laughs) I think it's a plan. I don't know. Well. Well, there's there's some sisters out there that I, um I don't know it it's just yeah it's horrible but I'll tell you what like I said I think you're gonna see a stampede of this I think you're gonna see more story the media won't be able to ignore it yeah they won't be able to make victims out of it uh, but the the second so I predict week one in school week one week two some incident happens. Yeah, police are blamed, and there's a stampede to get the hell out of there. But I'll tell you what, I'm not really in favor of a special session. I I yeah. do not want, I do not. The less this legislature meets, the better. So I don't want them meeting, and who knows what else they'll try That's and true. tackle. Um, I I don't want that either. So yeah, um, but I don't know who to put in charge. I certainly don't want the attorney general anywhere near it. The governor's an idiot. I don't want him anywhere near it. <laughs> Um, I don't trust a lot of these school boards. Yeah. So I don't I don't know where the decision for this should rest. With parents? It's gonna have to be it's gonna have to be voting with their feet. Yeah. It's the only thing that will change it is voting with their feet. 
leaving these districts. Leaving the districts, or if you're not going to leave the district, take your feet, go down to the school board meeting, and you you raise a stink until they fix it. Letters to the editor. I mean, uh, how many times have we talked about that? How effective they can be. Creating a little group or a pod, uh, you know, mm -hmm. like-minded people. There's strength in numbers. It's just yeah. that simple. Um, I, I think another thing to do is to reach out to your local police department. Right. You know, speak to them too and, you know, yeah. listen to their concerns as well. Yeah. Partner with them. I mean, uh, you know. Stand behind them, yeah. I mean, nothing stops them. Look, I, I think it's a reasonable position to say, look, I don't, I don't want police choking somebody to death. I don't think they want to do that either. No. But I think it's important to have those folks there if something happens. If on the off chance it does, I'd rather have a law enforcement trained professional in there than, you know, uh, so it could save the life of a kid or a teacher. And if we're going to play semantics with everything here like we're doing, that puts them in a position of but deer in headlights. Yeah. And it's funny, too. What do you want not doing something? I, this yeah. just came to me. Uh-huh. Two football players get into a fight, man. They're big dudes. Mm-hmm. Okay? You're not going to restrain one of them without Taking putting him into woes. a half-smelly yeah. Nelson. Sorry, it's right. not. And Or the police freeze. And like, well, okay, hold on. I can't grab this person by the torso. I can't grab them. can't put them in a headlock. can't right. put them in a sleeper. Uh, you uh. know. Can't do the bushwhacker battering ram. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> and that freezing for those five seconds yeah. can make a difference too. Didn't say you can't drop kick him. Oh, really? Okay. Right. Well, I can't. Maybe drop. you could do that. I'll give him the macho man elbow. Yeah. That's what I'll do. I think that's <laughs> legal, right? <laughs> Why not? I'm soared with the eagles and I'm slithered <laughs> with the snakes. Yeah, yeah. Dig it. <laughs> um, Oh, yeah, you're going to stop this right now. <laughs> it's okay for macho men to show every emotion available. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, the school's just, I mean, you couldn't create worse messes than we've created. And uh, I've said before that I hope they fall apart on the collapse under their own weight. Some days I'm glad I don't have children, Jay. There's just some days I, I'm yeah. just glad I don't. Well, like I said earlier, you show me something the hippies haven't ruined, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I'll work don't up know. a special reward. I don't know. I think uh, based on their wardrobe, they've made motel shower curtains look better. <laughs> no, I just I don't. Know. <laughs> Isn't that what they used to wear? But it looked like it was looked like a motel shower curtain. Is that it? Uh, yeah. Look like that. Hey, here's my here's my shower curtain at that uh, Super Eight. Oh, that hippie's uh, wearing it. You thought a friend, or, but I'll tell you what. Yeah. You talk about the hippies reading it. Now it's the next generation. The next generation. Well, look is, who's training them. Yeah, it's the it's the hippie generation. They're they're the ones making policy. They're the ones in Washington. They're the ones still in St. Paul. You're starting to get some of the generation below that generation X that are are coming in, but it it it, it it's that's, still that's way me. too I'm many. X. Way too many. I think about three is too many. Yeah. Way too many of these baby boomers that are still in, clutching into power, you know, freezing up in public because they're so old and unhealthy. That, All right, enough Biden ripping here. Oh, McConnell, too. He did it again. Oh, did he? Yes. <laughs> he did it again. How old is he? He's only... 82, I think. Well, Biden's only 81. I think that's ridiculously old. You know what? I got to say something yeah. to you. It's pathetic when you're that old and changing your diaper and all that, that you don't have you don't have the the grace and the dignity to retire. Yeah. I mean, look at Dianne Feinstein and where she's at. I mean, it's not an age thing, though. I mean, look at John Fetterman and where he's at. The hoodie. Yeah, I mean, I, it, I, it's... Power, it shows how big, how vast, how controlling our government is. Yeah. That the people in power won't let it go. You know, Thomas Jefferson once said, said that no one's ever been, I'm 
paraphrasing, no one's ever been happier with the shackles of power coming off of them than me. Yeah. When he, I think he said that to James Madison when he left. He just said, dude, you yeah. take this and <laughs> yeah. take I, this going job. Going to Monticello and, and don't yeah. bother me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, it, it, the spirit of him writing John Adams and all that yeah. it was the same. He had the same attitude. It was just, you know, the people today who have power, it just goes to show they just, it's their whole, it becomes their whole being. They can't yeah. let it go. And when you're wet in your pants in, in the United States Senate and you're still hanging on and hanging yeah. on. Well, I think that there's on. almost something demonic about it to the point where it's like you have to be in power so badly. Nobody else can make a correct decision but you. Yeah, there's a, you know. There's a, a, <laughs> A degree of vanity and and you know what when it comes yeah. to joe biden and i've said this before i've said this about so i'm a huge critic of eleanor roosevelt as well oh boy i blame so much of joe biden's problems on his wife oh yes his wife should have the guts to stand up and she's a weak weak person mm -hmm. and she loves the camera and she needs it to metabolize her food and <laughs> what she should do <laughs> is the same thing eleanor roosevelt should have done in 1944 he said, you know what? My husband is old, he's ill, he's sick, he's served enough. Whether you agree with him or not, he's done his duty. And I'm going to intervene and make sure that he can retire. Yeah. And he can just be a grandfather. He's earned that, and, and that's the way it's going to be. Yep. And I hold Eleanor Roosevelt responsible for that. She's just She was a horrible individual. She sat there and let her husband go on to be president die in office yep. and in my opinion much of that created the problems in eastern europe that we had after Absolutely. that his incapacity his joe biden at yalta i believe was a real big problem for the country he shouldn't have been there and he was and i'm sorry you women's rights people but i do think that's a spouse's job to intervene loving that person comes ahead of your own power and I think if Jill Biden had one ounce, one ounce of of integrity, that's what she would do. Right. It's yeah, just but disgusting that she won't. No. I, it, it's absolutely it, when you love somebody, you you preserve their dignity at all costs. Nancy Reagan walking around at the beach with Ron when he was yeah. at Alzheimer's. Yeah. And didn't recognize his own kids. Yeah. Can you imagine watching that. You know, Reagan was the president I, was of my youth. Yeah, and to to sit there and again, whatever you think of President Reagan, it's I'm not making it about politics. But imagine him walking on the beach with Alzheimer's, and we watched him not recognize his children and grandchildren. Yeah, you know, forgetting that he was president. Yeah, forgetting that he was an actor. That's crazy. Falling yeah. down. What, what would that? I, I can't imagine that. Yeah. But that's what we're watching right now. That is. We're watching a man who should be retired, who should be at home sitting on his deck, enjoying his family or visiting Hunter in jail. Instead, he's publicly it's falling apart. And any any kind of legacy he would have left, granted, he's always been a liar. Granted, he, <laughs> he has always been an empty suit. Granted, he's never stood for anything. Any legacy he would have had, any chance of people forgetting all of the hanging out with Robert Byrd and the crime bill and all <laughs> yeah. this stuff, people would have forgot about that eventually. But now, because he didn't let go, his wife won't let him go, it's going to sink her husband and his legacy. It's going to sink her son in any future he could hope, could have hoped to have had. Yeah, I know. Because this is all coming public. It's just all, You've destroyed your family. It's all Good power. job. Yeah, it's just all. Good job. It's the lust for power and to control others. That 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 lust is so strong among these people in Washington and state capitals. It's just it is so prevalent. It's so intoxicating. Yeah. Um. And it's funny you say that because. I remember going down the few times I've gone down to the Capitol. I haven't been there that often. Yeah, I've been to, went down there for a few tax rallies. I've testified a couple times. It is intoxicating. 
Yeah. Especially when I started to get to know people. Uh-huh. And they would recognize me, or I'd ah, you know, the, it's like being at a political convention. The back slapping and the, the um, yeah, rah rah rah. It it is hard to um, reject. It's hard. I found myself getting. That's why I don't do it anymore. I get sucked in to. Well, there is an environment, and and like I say, I think there's a demonic aspect to it because there is this environment that hangs over government. (laughs) You know, we have made it too easy to get rich and to get powerful by becoming a quote-unquote public servant. Yeah, you know, we got a minimum wage. Why can't we have a maximum wage? Let's have a maximum wage on top of it. Yeah. I know that goes against everything I always preach. But. <laughs> in government, since it's public sector, maybe we could make an exception. It's not the free market, anyways. Oh, we, as far as I'm concerned, we don't have a free market. We have right. crony capitalism is what we've got, and that's what we're stuck with. Right. You get in bed with government or make something government likes. You know, the liberals, they're against corporate welfare unless you make solar panels. Right. You know, just a quick aside, I, I know. This has nothing to do with it. Yeah, we've gone way off. But but, but, but we aren't. That's the thing we're not. But you mentioned this. And with the weakness that came in Eastern Europe uh, because of the decline of President Roosevelt, and we see what's happening now again in Eastern Europe with the decline of this president, do you see parallels and do you see a similar outcome or do you think we're going to end up are we going to end up in a war this time with Russia? Are are we going to what what um, what do you think? I mean, cuz we are weak. <laughs> do I think we'll end up in a war with Russia? No. Yeah. We'll end up in a proxy war. We'll end up in another cold well, war. Well, we already are. Yeah, we'll end up in another cold war. That's what we we'll, that's what we're in, in in many ways right now. Do I see a, a, an iron curtain, a Warsaw pact? Uh, not in name. I think it will be hanging out there. Yeah. And I think I think ultimately again, I think ultimately the way to fight this is um to drive a wedge between Russia and others. Right. We've taken the opposite. It's closer to our enemies. Yeah. Uh, our sanctions have done the opposite. Russia's looked other places for their markets. Uh, I, I think I think we're doing the exact wrong thing we should be doing now. Do I feel bad for the Ukrainian people? Yep. Do I absolutely? Do I believe we're hearing the truth about this war? No. Too? No. I think if there were a Republican president, it would be a lot different. I think there'd be people on the ground it there. Depends. I think there would be people. You don't hear casualty reports. You don't hear. Uh, there's no reporters on the ground in Ukraine the way they were in Iraq or Afghanistan. Yeah. I don't know that I think with the corporate media, it would, would be a little different. Um, and maybe not so much about being a Republican president. For some reason, these uh, proxy wars don't seem to get the same media attention. Uh, I think the death tolls are much higher than, than we're being told. Yeah, I don't believe them. Um, do, what do I think it will lead to? I don't know. I think it will lead to... Um, There's a school of thought, sort of the neocon thought, that you have to stop the Russians at their... uh, But I think there's ways to do that that aren't militarily. Yeah. Um, I think if this war goes longer, if Biden gets reelected, I think troops will be sent there. Yeah. I don't believe him when he says he's not going to send troops. We've already sent, like... Special ops, and this is another thing not being reported, that kind of like South Vietnam, how we started putting advisors yeah. on the ground there. We're already starting to do that, and we've put really sophisticated weapons over there, which is very scary, because if Russia wins the war, do they capture all those weapons? I mean, <laughs> you know, it's pretty scary. Uh I think this war could have been avoided yeah. uh, with negotiations, with with Ukraine staying out of NATO, and and uh, because we have pushed NATO east. Every president except perhaps Trump has poked that Russian bear, I believe. Yeah. So I think, and again, we fomented a revolution 
in Ukraine um, under the Obama administration, which I think was another mistake. Absolutely. So I think um, I think we got to stop and be a lot smarter. Do I think we're going to be? No. I think that uh, ultimately uh, a fierce Cold War will break out. And I still consider China our number one enemy. And the Chinese and the Russians haven't been this close since Stalin and Mao. Right. And that's a big, big problem. It's a huge problem. And the other problem, th- there's other ways to fight this too. Let me just, one thing we can stop doing is borrowing money and printing money. Because the Chinese have that, we don't have leverage over the Chinese, right? And to get that leverage, we need to stop giving it to them. Yeah, we need to uh, stop with the free trade. We need to stop with the cheap labor. We need to stop with uh, printing money. We need to stop selling bonds to them. Uh, we need we need to stop it completely. Um, because ultimately, China can consume from Russia anything we can't. Yeah, that may not have been true during the Cold War, but it is now. Mm-hmm. And so, if you put sanctions on Russia, they mean nothing, right? It, it, so, you have to have the leverage, and we don't have any leverage, and we've blown it all, right? So, I'm pretty pessimistic of where this is going to end. Do I think there's going to be a nuclear war? No, I don't. Um, I, I. Th- which is funny because if you listen to the Biden administration, ah, Putin's a nutcase. He's crazy. Ah, but don't worry. He won't use a nuclear weapon. Well, that doesn't jive, does it? Right. So, I mean, I don't th- I think Putin, I doubt that would happen. You can't take it off the table. Yeah. Well, I mean, with tactical nukes, I mean, you can be it's so. It's very different. It's, it, this is not Hiroshima. That's, right. I think people That's don't have a concept happen. of that. Right. Well, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, you think um, I'm more worried about the economics of it because yeah. to me, war, you can avoid sending troops to a war, but yeah. you can't avoid the economics of it. No, you can't. And I, I do think we're already in a Cold War, uh-huh. a proxy war. At, at Also, I think that we're positioning ourselves or we're blustering, you know, at least like we're ready to go into the hot war. Uh, whether we do or not, I don't know. We couldn't conquer uh, Afghanistan. Well, I know. It, it would be disastrous. But you've got China and Russia testing us on our West Coast by sending ships and planes extremely close, if not infringing upon our our waters and our, our air uh, space. So you you already have them pressing us militarily they know that we're sending more to ukraine than we should be that we're neck deep in this thing we're sending that, stuff we don't have we're sending to print money to go yeah, do it i know i i don't know if biden wins another term i think we could it happens on our own soil huh. um if if trump wins uh, yeah notice i'm not giving any chance to anybody <laughs> else if trump wins i I don't think it'll be where, like he says, I can, I can end this in a day. I, I, I don't think that's going to happen per se. But I think he'll be able to get people to the table. But just notice <coughs> when Putin invaded. Yeah. Notice he didn't do anything when Trump was right. There. And I, I agree with you to an extent because I do think Trump would get a deal. I think he was close to getting one before. Right. Um, I just think he couldn't bring everybody there without... I think that he got bad advice from the John Boltons and oh, yes. the, some of the people that... I think Trump tried to bring all advisors to the table instead of just, it's my foreign policy and I'm going to dictate to that. Right. You know, I think there was too much trying to reconcile... Everybody in the Republican Party, I, th- I think that was a mistake in retrospect. Um, but yeah, I, I think it is not a coincidence that when he left office, this started getting hotter. Mm-hmm. I really don't. 
Well, obviously. Because I think Bidens are compromised in Ukraine, for one. Absolutely they are. And we Millions of dollars. <laughs> and there's, there's two other things that you can't separate from this issue. One is they tried to impeach Trump for for going after the Bidens in there. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can't dismiss that. And you can't dismiss that that government was placed there by us. I, I always say, if the Russians overthrew the government in Canada, we would never sit here on our butts and take that. Well, Biden might. Biden might. Okay. <laughs> Even Jimmy Carter wouldn't have sat there and done nothing. No, okay? he wouldn't So. Have. Of course, different generation of a guy, but yeah. um, Bill Clinton would have not have sat there and done nothing. Right, it would not have happened. We, there was gonna be, something was gonna happen if we did, if that happened. So the fact that we do that and then expect oh, Putin's just got to grab his ankles, he had warned that, that that was a red line for him, and we crossed it. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm not, and again, I'm not taking Putin's side. No, I'm not he's just a bad a, guy. He's a look horrible what, individual. Look what he just did to the in that opponent of yeah. his. Yeah, and he, and I mean, the, I hate the war, so I, I'm not doing that. I'm trying to understand it, not justify it. Right. So I don't know. I mean, I don't. I don't know that there's easy an easy way out of this right now either. You know, I don't know that kind of like being in Korea. I don't know. That there's yeah. a simple way to just get out at this point. Yeah, I don't know either. It's it's you've got to have both people agree to something, and I don't know if there's anybody that can negotiate a deal. It's Trump. I mean, I I love what he did to President Z when he. <laughs> I mean, you you know about that, right? With the yeah. pictures and the yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look, we just bombed. <laughs> Just bomb Syria. I can't help but just. I know. I can't help but just get a kick out of Trump. I don't know drive mad, do because there's there's some things about him that kind of drive me nuts. Yeah. And, but I, I'll tell you what I I I I just I felt uh, I felt I feel so like nobody's in control right now. Yeah. You know, like I've never felt this way, even with presidents I didn't agree with. I never felt like they weren't there running the working 24s. What do right. you want to say about Barack Obama or Bill Clinton or George W? I never felt like they were like working three hour days. You yeah. know, it was right. You know, it was like I never thought that they weren't running the show, even if I disagreed with what was going on. You know, it just it feels so much like we have no command structure right biden doesn't talk to us he doesn't do interviews he doesn't make speeches he doesn't go on a prime time he doesn't do press conferences he doesn't do anything to let us know that he's in charge no and i don't think he is so it feels like chaos but i think it's a managed chaos because i think the people that are in charge behind the scenes this is what they want as always, those people don't care about the rest of us. They just care about themselves. Yeah, I mean, they're not going to go. They're not going to go fight no more, are they? No. It's like World War One. They'll, they'll cause chaos, and then the bankers take all the money and become gazillionaires, and somebody else's kid can go get killed. Well, yeah, yuck, ick, ick is right. <laughs> By the way, yeah. public schools, ick. Yes. Get your kids it. out now. Well, just, I mean. Yeah, it's, I don't know. Like I said, you name me one thing that's better. One thing that's improved over the last three years. Name me one. I'm making more money. Well, of course okay. I'm my bills have all doubled. But <laughs> yeah, well, there is that too. <laughs> I got, you know, I got my uh, check from the state government. Yeah. My 260 bucks. Oh, that's good. And the only reason I got it was it was based on my 2021 income, not my 2022 income. Oh. Or I wouldn't have gotten it. Really? 75 grand is, is rich in this state. Huh. And I made more than that last year, but I didn't in 21. Hmm. So... 
Um, or at least I didn't uh, report that much. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I got my... I got my, it was, let's see, I think it's eight and a half, I think I worked it out with, with what the surplus was, yeah. I think I got eight and a half percent of the surplus. Huh. Surplus was about $3,000 per Minnesotan. Huh. And I got 260 of it. Wow. <sighs> so, I'm Yuck. so happy, I'm, I'm so proud. Yeah. Gotta be proud. Yeah, I would just love to, I, you know what I'd love to do? I'd love for a grocery store, say I went to, to the grocery store. I bought eighty four dollars worth of groceries. Yeah, and I gave them a hundred dollar bill, and they said, "You know what? We're going to keep that as surplus money because we're going to save money to to uh, you know expand and and uh, you know do this and that. So we're going to keep we're going to keep the change." Isn't that what yeah. government just did? I mean, yeah. we're not going to give it back to you, right? You know, it's ours. We'll divvy it up, and if we feel mm-hmm. like giving you a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah, then we will. I remember during the pandemic when Chipotle put that uh, uh, policy into place. We don't carry uh, or exact exact change only. We're not giving change. So uh, whatever you give us, we're keeping. And they got in trouble for that. Remember, the Holiday Gas Station did that. They got in trouble too. Yeah, but our government doesn't seem to get in trouble. I gave you too much money. Uh, too bad. <laughs> I got other things I want to spend that on. Yeah. You don't get it back. Uh. Well, Jay, I want you to attempt after that horrible, horrible news there. It's just, just always bad. But you've got to end it on some kind of note that ain't so that ain't so horrible. Styling and profiling, jet flying, limousine riding, wheeling, dealing, son of a gun, sign off sermon. I wonder what show we started doing this. I don't know. It's been a while though. I bet for a oh, year yeah. or two we've done this. Oh, longer than Is that. It? Yeah. With the brother love theme. Jay, take it away. Thank you, Andrew. Yes, indeed. You know, as parents, I know that it, ever since that song came out with Dionne Warwick, you know, it, we've got to remember the children are our future, treat them well, and let them lead the way. Oh, I just wanted to gag. Anyways. It's true. I, we have to think about the next generation as parents. Speak as a member of Generation X. We've done a really terrible job at raising up the next generation. When you look at the way the millennials have turned out, and really, they did need a whooping, and we didn't give them one because they told us we couldn't do it. You know, they needed some disappointments to not get everything they wanted because we didn't want to hurt their feelings. You know, but we gave them everything they wanted. We gave them the participation trophies instead of saying, no, you came in in eighth place. Hopefully your team does better next year. No, we don't. We didn't do that stuff. We coddled a generation and we ended up with a bunch of children. And again, I'm not speaking 100% of the children that are of the, that generation are this way. I'm not saying that there's not any, anybody that's different. It's not a blanket statement, but it is, it is a generalization that proves true just because you have such a large vocal group (laughs) within this generation that, that they are spoiled rotten. And they want it their way right away. They don't want to have to work for promotions. They think they should get it right away just because of their good looks. They, or their supposed good looks. We, everything that has been beautiful in the past is is now ugly. Everything that has been ugly in the past is now beautiful. Everything that is concrete in the past now is fluid. Anything that is fluid now is the law of the land. Uh, there is nothing to to call true, nothing to hang our hat upon. And this is because we have raised a generation of kids that can't handle it. Wilson said that. And guess what? We got a generation of people now that can't handle the truth. They can't handle that they're they're actually born into a certain gender all the way down to every single chromosome in their body. They have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome, or they have two X chromosomes, and that cannot be changed. 
doesn't matter what kind of plastic surgery you do, doesn't matter what kind of hormones you take, doesn't matter what kind of indoctrination you receive. It doesn't change. There are things about the male body that will never change that you cannot change, including things that like in in the way the pelvis is constructed just because of having to give childbirth that you cannot change. There are things that we as Generation X and for some of us that are boomers that see our grandkids floundering, right? I'm, I'm not part of the boomer generation. I'm, I'm Generation X, but I see a problem. Generation X, for some reason, we thought it eh, wasn't necessary to, to get our kids a religious education. We'll just let them find their own way. Well, look at the mess that created. We're disconnected from God, and we're disconnected from our identity, and we're disconnected from truth. And that's our doing. That is our doing for not putting those things front and center and bringing our kids up in a way where they're able to learn truth learn who they are and 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 be told once in a while no that's not the truth we don't make believe this is the way things are and and having to deal with some of the harsh realities of life but they're all the better and the stronger for it when they do me i'm a child who didn't have everything i wanted i'm a child that grew up in poverty i'm a child that that you know, things weren't always great at school. You know, I had to learn to work for things. I, I, I had to learn that things don't always come easy. I might not get everything I want, but the opportunity is there. And I think I'm all the better and all the stronger for it. I think because of those things, I am an optimist because I believe that that I can do anything I set my mind to. It might take a long time. It might not take a long time, but I I shouldn't ever expect things just to be handed to me. I think I'm all the stronger for that because when the disappointments come, when the setbacks come, I get up off the floor again, I dust myself off, and I keep moving forward. And I think that is something that is missing from this generation. It's something we didn't teach them. A lot of us didn't have it easy growing up in Generation X, being latchkey kids, coming home from school, having parents that worked. You know, that was just the beginning of what we see now, where parents are having to hold down two and three jobs, if parents are even together at, at all, and, and kids are having to raise themselves completely. It is, it is beyond, it, it, it is beyond anything that, that we should have let happen, but I don't believe it's beyond repair. It just starts with doing the right thing now, waking up every day, determining that we're going to live differently, that we're going to live better, that we're going to stop being our children's friend exclusively and start being their parent that if they say something that's not true we're going to tell them yeah honey that's not true buddy that sorry world doesn't work that way and we're we're gonna have to be truthful with them because we're going to have to build and it's gonna be a lot harder to do it into young adults but build into them the expectation that the world doesn't always work the way that we want it to. And it is it is by sheer determination and hard work and and just the blessings of, of the Lord upon upon our lives that we're able to persevere and to attain to anything. We've got to bring that back in. We it was a mistake. To, to have have vacated those those high grounds in and do what's easy the easy thing never has rewards 
We've got to show them self-sacrifice. We've got to show them discipline. We've got to show them a, a religious mooring. We've got to show them that education is important. We got to show them the 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 value of hard work and entrepreneurship and doing the right thing even when it's hard and 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 ethics and business and politics. We have to show them that these things are important. And we have to do this in a way that makes sense. We got to bring them near. We got to love them. But sometimes love isn't just giving them what they want. So whoever's willing to step onto the playing field, whoever is willing to take up this mantle and fight for what's right, fight for, for what's hard to attain, fight for an improvement in the character of our children, in our own character, which seems to be lacking, then it's time. It is time to start putting together campaigns for 2024. It is time to step into positions to volunteer, to get back in into places where we can have an effect in our churches, in our political organizations, in our volunteer organizations, in our, our city councils, our school boards, our county boards, our, our, our state senate and houses. It's, it's time. So if you're willing to, to make that sacrifice, get a hold of us. You can do that at C-O-M-M Solutions, M-N at gmail.com. That's C-O-M-M Solutions, M-N at gmail.com. Because we're here and, and we have given people strategy that have helped them win these local races. It can be done. And we we can reform and reinstate the the very things that have helped us to be a successful leader in the world for 200 years. It's not impossible. But it starts with you. And it starts with me every day when we wake up. It is time to do the right thing. We love you, Minnesota. But now it's your turn to get to work. If I get too caught